I will admit right away that this is probably the most difficult calculation in the interest rate futures concept. So if you don't want to do tedious or difficult, skip this video. Otherwise, I'm going to illustrate how we calculate the theoretical price of a futures contract where the underlying commodity happens to be a U.S. Treasury bond. In order to make this easier to follow along, I've used the exact same assumptions that are in John Hole's example 6.2. Those assumptions are given in yellow. Keep in mind what we're doing here. We are computing or estimating the theoretical price of a futures contract where the underlying commodity happens to be a U.S. Treasury bond. I think there are two things, or at least two things, that make this especially difficult or tedious. First is the timeline. We are... Keep in mind, estimating the current theoretical price of a futures contract. So I have that in orange as the current time. And in the model here, that just happens to be August 1st, 2017. That's the current price of a futures contract that matures 270 days later on April 28th, 2018. So that's maturity of the futures contract. And that's where the short position will be obligated to deliver the commodity, in this case, happens to be the U.S. Treasury bond. So that's the timeline. We want to keep, being, keep that in mind. The second thing that makes this difficult is the relationship between the futures contract and the underlying commodity, that Treasury bond. In the previous two videos, I've discussed the conversion factor and cheapest to deliver that are all about that unique feature of this type of futures contract, and that is to say that when we get to delivery, that short position will have a choice among the bonds in the basket that are available for delivery. And we say that that self-interested short position will, of course, select the cheapest to deliver among them, where the conversion factor almost but not exactly equalizes among those choices. So, what makes this challenging about the futures contract is that as we're pricing the futures contract today, we do not know, and really we cannot know, exactly which of those bonds the short position will select. So we have to make that assumption, as John Hull notes, in the problem setup. And you can see here in the assumptions that what we assume is that the cheapest to deliver bond, we're guessing here really, will be a bond with a 12% coupon, and we'll have here, you can see, a conversion factor of 1.6, right? So when we get to maturity, the short position delivers, the, that bond is cheapest to deliver with the 12% coupon, and they will receive the settlement price on the futures contract multiplied by the conversion factor. Okay, so because these calculations are tedious, I have this diagram, which I hope helps make sense of this, and that is that I start here in the lower left-hand corner where we have the quote price, also called the flat price, or could even call the clean price, of that cheapest to deliver bond, which is, you can see, an assumption of $115. So as in yellow, I have the cur current quoted or clean price of what we have assumed is the cheapest to deliver bond. Okay, we add accrued interest, as you probably know, we add accrued interest to get the cash price of the same bond. So we would go from a quoted or flat price to a cash or full price by adding the accrued interest. That's basic bond math. And we get $116.978. And just a reminder, that's a spot price. We oftentimes don't say that. It's just implicit. It's the spot price of that bond. It happens to be the spot cash bond. The spot cash price of what we are assuming is the cheapest to deliver bond. Okay, then we convert the spot price into a forward price, treating it like a commodity. And as you'd expect, that price increases. In this example, to 119.711. And so this is now the cash or full price of the same bond, but it's a forward price as opposed to a spot price. So you see how I started here and I'm moving up, and now I'm just going to deconstruct uh, going in the opposite direction. 
I'm going to subtract the accrued interest. And so if we take the cash or full price, subtract the accrued interest, we end up with the quote or flat price. See how these are in parallel? But the only difference now is I have a forward price as opposed to a spot price. So I now have here have $114 and about 86 cents, which is the quote price or flat price but it's a forward price of what we have assumed is the cheapest to deliver bond. Then the only remaining step is to divide that by the conversion factor to obtain an estimate for the futures contract. Because again, that last, well, this last step is a little tricky when you first look at these, this tedious set of calculations. We just want to keep in mind that the short when we get to maturity of the futures contract here, April 270 days later, they will receive settlement price of the futures contract multiplied by the conversion factor. So to get the futures uh, contract price from the quote, we would divide here at this point by the 1.6. And we get here an estimate of the theoretical futures price of this contract of $71 and just about uh, looks like 79 cents. Okay, so that's my diagram that I hope lends some intuition to admittedly this uh, difficult, tedious set of calculations that I have here in the spreadsheet. And unfortunately, because this is difficult, I don't think there's any way around actually taking your own time and going step by step, but I'm uploading the spreadsheet here if you'd like to um, take a look with your own set of assumptions or examples, right? So over here on the left, I have John Hull's solution step by step or my implementation into Excel. Up here in the upper left, of course, I have the assumptions. Over here in the upper right, I have the timeline, which as I mentioned, I do think that you sort of have to master the timeline before the rest makes sense. I've highlighted in orange the current, the today, sometimes we call that T0 as to when we're pricing, as, we're, as when we're obtaining the theoretical price of this futures contract. And then you'll notice it's bracketed by the last coupon that that cheapest to deliver bond pays. And then the next coupon that it pays. The coupon rate that we've assumed for the cheapest to deliver bond is 12%, semi-annual as usual. So on a face value, that means each coupon is $6. So there was a coupon 60 days prior to today, and there will be another coupon in plus 122 days. And then by taking 270 and, and subtracting the 122 days, we can see that in another 148 days, we ha would have maturity of the futures contact contract. And I remind, that's maturity of the futures contract, which is separate from the underlying cheapest to deliver bond. Okay, so that with the timeline. And then over here, I have John Hull's calculations. But in this short video, I'll prefer, as my final step here, just to focus on my... Uh, recasting of this or reinterpretation of this, it's equivalent into the cost of carry model. I do that because uh, for most of us studying John Hole here at this section, the cost of carry is much more intuitive to us. And that's all we're doing here, right? There's, it's basically a two step. It's first, we use the cost of carry to calculate the forward price. So that's the, but that's the forward cash price. And then we take that cash or dirty price, convert it to the clean price, and standardize it by dividing the um, conversion factor. So here we have that spot price of 116,978. And that is the cash or dirty or full price of the cheapest to deliver bond. So you can see that 116,978, all that is, is the quoted price of the cheapest to deliver bond, 115, where we've added the accrued interest um, sent because 60 days have, a, have elapsed since the last coupon payment. Then 
There will be another coupon coming up, um, coming up another $6. You can see the present value of that is a little bit less than $6. In the cost of carry model, that's a lumpy income that we know about. And so you can see would be included here in the cost of carry by subtracting it from the spot price. And so here in this forward cash price, I have the same price for the cash futures price of 119.711, but I'm simply using the cost of carry model that for some of us at this point in the syllabus will be uh, very familiar, right? We take the spot, we subtract the present value of known income here, and that's the next coupon. You can see it's a little bit less than $6, and then we compound it forward. So that 119.711 again is using the cost of carry model to compute the forward price of the cash or full price of that cheapest to deliver bond. Then the only thing we need to do is reverse engineer it in the second step, reverse engineer so to speak. We subtract the accrued interest and you can see that's uh, less than $6 as well, which will give us the quoted forward price of this cheapest to deliver 12% bond. You can see is a little bit less than 115. And we take that final step of dividing by the conversion factor of 1.6, gets us the uh, futures price, which is the point of the exercise. So these values that I've color coded, they match. Here's John Hull's sort of what I consider that tedious walkthrough. And then again here, here's my attempt to make it just incrementally easier by recasting in the cost of carry, where we first use the cost of carry to get the forward cash price, so the cheapest to deliver. And then we back out really the theoretical price of the futures contract on that underlying bond. Okay, so that spreadsheet is, all, uh, there's a link to the spreadsheet you can, you can look at and uh, take more time with. I hope that's helpful. If the video is helpful, please subscribe to the channel and you'll, uh, you'll get updated with the next videos. Thanks.